In this SNP, we're going to focus on the automatic global error variable. Now the error variable is an array list. And if you run the get type method, we will see that. Like all arrays in PowerShell, the most recent object moves to the top of the array. If we look at the count property on the error variable, we can see that we have zero errors. Now let's generate a couple of errors. As you can see from the red below, we have generated two different errors. Looking at the count property again, we can see that both errors have been stored in the error variable. We can run the clear method and remove the error records from the error variable. Looking at the count property again, we can see that both errors have been removed. It's important to note that you need to run the clear method with caution because it could potentially clear errors you need to investigate later to aid in troubleshooting your code. Now let's generate another error since we cleared our previous ones. Looking at index zero, we see that it stores the most recent error record that we just generated. Now let's generate one more error with the get alias commandlet. And looking at index zero again, we see that our most recent error was added to the top. Looking at index one, we see our error record from the get process commandlet. Running the get type method on index zero, we see the object type is an error record. We can pipe the error to the get member commandlet and retrieve all of the methods and properties available to us. Looking at the category info property, we can determine the commandlet name, the error exception that was thrown, the reason for the error, the name of the object we passed, as well as the type of object that was passed to the commandlet. In our example, we pass the string Mark Twain to the get alias commandlet and the item not found exception was thrown. Now let's look at the invocation info property. It provides quite a bit of useful information to help us troubleshoot exactly where the error was thrown. We can see the commandlet that threw the error, the line and line number that generated the error, and if this error had been generated from a script instead of the console, it would also provide the script name. The invocation property is very helpful when trying to troubleshoot a specific error in a script that is scheduled or running in the background. And if we look at the get type method on our exception, we can determine the type of exception that was thrown. In this case, it was an item not found exception. Check out my other SNP on using the try and catch script blocks to see how these exception types can be used to improve error handling. An additional method that is available to us is the clone method. Here we are cloning all of our error records into the error record variable. Looking at the count property, both error records have been cloned to our variable. Checking out index zero, we see our get alias error from before. And if we pipe index zero to get member, we will see that as an error record object type. The clone method is useful when you need to clear the error global variable, but need to further troubleshoot the existing error records and do not want to lose them. This covers understanding the PowerShell error variable. Thank you for watching.